Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shaman Sister Sessions. My name is Michelle Hawk, and I'm here with my shaman sister, Catherine Bird. And thank you for joining us today for episode 128 on alchemy for your spiritual awakening. I'm so excited to delve into this topic. This is a, uh, a particular passion for both Catherine and myself. We are both uh, practicing alchemists, I guess. Is that fair to say, Kat, that we're both practicing alchemists? <laughs> it's fair to say. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so we're here to talk a little bit about what is alchemy and why is this actually one of the best possible tools that you can have in your toolkit whenever you're going through an awakening or initiatory process, because it really gives us the roadmap for whatever uh, whatever we're going through as this cyclical transformational process. So I'm very excited to talk about that today. Kat, how are you being? Great. <laughs> awesome. Just, you know, in the middle of a work day here and um, seeing clients and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, I'm doing great overall. No complaints. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> Supporting, supporting people in transformation as we do. So uh, I guess let's start with a little bit of demystifying alchemy, because I feel like that's kind of a precursor to looking at alchemy for the spiritual awakening. It is a buzzword in the industry and the community of uh, neo-spirituality, and it gets thrown around a lot in coaching. I've seen alchemy all over the place to describe anything like of anything remotely elemental or combining different things together or just sort of a vague term applied to the umbrella of transformation. So let's let's begin there. How does that sound? Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. that it's uh, a little bit everywhere and a little bit uh, has gotten watered down as everything does. Uh, I was just, even the other day, I this isn't about alchemy, but I was reading someone's post who's a teacher who was talking about how that a lot of people who had come to her from shamanic trainings had actually never learned how to work with spirits. And I thought that was very interesting. And she was like, yeah, they've That's had very weird. shamanic courses that they've taken, but her, what she was saying was that they seemed more that they were working on psychology and, um, uh, I don't even know what else, right? <laughs> inner inner work processes or something, but not working with spirits. And that seems, I don't know, like a core tenant of anything shamanic should have spirits involved. So the thing is that people just title things, you know, courses and stuff like that things because they're, it, it is buzzwordy wor wordy, and they're trying to come up with something that's cute or interesting or, you know, Googleable or that they can brand around, right? And alchemy is sexy. Mm -hmm. In real mm -hmm. life, it's not sexy at all, but <laughs> what, we, what we, we think it's like, ooh, it's like, mm, it's like secret geometry and like mm, chocolate. Right. And there's a lot of like chocolate alchemy, you know, like food, like things that are really yummy get called alchemy a lot of times. Oh, well, that's so yummy. Uh, so it seems, it seems very sexy. Uh, it is not very sexy, but a lot of things are called alchemy. So I think there's a lot of things out there using this word that don't, don't have an actual basis in ancient alchemical understanding, knowledge, or practices. And so you want to look at how do you integrate ancient alchemical knowledge and practices into our modern awakening experience for the service of the individual and ultimately for service of the collective. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, what's coming to mind is I actually had a friend who is looking to start a candle company reach out to me to ask for my feedback because she had originally wanted to call it something, something alchemy. And she wanted to like get my thoughts on that. And I gave her my very honest thoughts and said, well, it's actually not alchemy. And of course, you're welcome to call it whatever you want. And also, I'm happy to help you brainstorm like what an actual term is that conveys more 
you know, perhaps a little more precisely what you wish to come up with. And I, gosh, I cannot for the life of me remember what we came up with, but she was very happy with it. And it ultimately ended up being more what she wanted to go for anyway. But yeah, it's like kind of mystical, kind of mysterious, sort of expensive is a little bit the vibe. Um, okay. Yeah. And so as Kat was saying, real alchemy, actual alchemy is not very sexy. It's, uh, it's very, um, What's the, what are the words I want to use? It's scientific. It's kind of messy. Like it includes multiple stages that have to do specifically with like taking things apart and both on all levels, you know, so we're working physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, materially, etherically. And so taking things apart I feel like never really is a very glamorous process because there's a lot of crap to wade through. And that's one of the pieces of alchemy is sorting out the crud. And so when you're, you know, I say this loving alchemy, and I know Kat loves alchemy as well. It's a core part of my practice. It's a core part of Kat's practice. And it, there's a reason for that, not because it's sexy or glamorous or expensive or mysterious, but because it is a very useful tool, it's a very useful set of skills that that is very effective for what it enables and what it allows us to do. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to go through a complete and total and holistic process of transformation on every level, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, material, etheric, and, and to do so in a very organized and total way. And I think that that is really unique among transformational processes where it's addressing all levels. It's, it's a holistic process and it really gives you a very scientific procedure for how to get from A to B through a process of transformation, how to do these practices, how to implement certain spiritual technologies and spiritual uh, skill, skill sets to create a, a, total overhaul of actual transformation where you're changing form in some way to become a more elevated form. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, uh, also, I think it's important to have the awareness that it is fundamental to the human journey. It is archetypal, meaning that we all have a relationship to this process, even if we don't know the stages fully and we haven't, uh, we haven't really, uh, studied a, a lot, we have a relationship to it. And one of the things that I see people struggle with the most is their inability to navigate these different stages that occur throughout the human lifetime. There's sort of this expectation I, I think that we've all been set up with that, you know, you kind of like you go to school and you do these things and you, you achieve these, uh, important parts of life, you know, maybe like school, job, marriage, babies, blah, blah, blah. But the thing that we've been told is that you get these things, you do these things, you have these accomplishments and you are going to just be okay and be happy and be fulfilled. And uh, oftentimes people are very shocked by the fact that life is very challenging and hard and is a series of initiations and transformations and growth uh, potentials. And so people hit these growth places where something's very hard and there's some sort of loss or, or change or the need for something to change, but person doesn't want to change. And so they hit into stagnation and non-movement forward and um, being so uncomfortable with the discomfort of transformation that, nothing, that they don't do anything. And then later on down the road are like, whoa, I really should have. Uh, really should have done that thing 20 years ago. So I think that a lot of times people get so stuck in life and then they are like, wow, I'm so stuck. I have, uh, you know, they might not describe it as stagnation in the way that I do, but like depression, anxiety, lack of fulfillment, lack of purpose, lack of connections, lack of meaning, 
all of those things that arise from a lot of trying to just keep the status quo alive of like, let me just keep my life moving in as little discomfort as possible all the time. Mm -hmm. But alchemy, actually, as we understand it, it welcomes us into discomfort. It welcomes us into the shadow. It welcomes us into the challenging aspects of our lives and ourself with the promise, really, that we will grow and gain knowledge and wisdom and understanding through these processes that if if we can allow ourselves to go through them. And uh, so I think that the understanding of that helps us to manage those parts of life that feel unmanageable or that feel like really overwhelming or when we feel that we've gotten to the place where we're just so stuck that we don't know what to do anymore. Mm. Yeah. Well said, Kat. I, I think it's really important what you were describing in terms of people just kind of assume that everything's going to be okay, or they assume that things are going to be predictable. And then when they're not, uh, you know, people kind of don't really know what to do with that. And I would add, in addition to uh, in addition to what you were talking about with stagnation, I would add that, you know, change change is inevitable, and people you know, human, the human brain is not, does not really embrace change because change is inherently unpredictable. And our, our neurology is wired to seek out and to prioritize the familiar because the familiar is a known quantity and evolutionarily it is ultimately a, a safer option or, or our brains are trained to think of it as a safer option rather than something that is new and unknown. And one of the ways that I describe alchemy, particularly when I talk about it for, for my course, my year-long apprenticeship course called I Am Alchemy, is that it is a roadmap for you to go from changes happening to me, whether I like it or not, which is where I feel like a lot of people are. And, you know, Kat, what you were describing, I think is, is really where a lot of people are in that is, oh gosh, you know, life is hitting the fan and spraying everywhere and oh gosh, make it stop. I don't know what to do. So going from that to becoming a conscious collaborator with an inevitable process that we know is inherently at work in our lives, in the world, as you said, alchemy is archetypal. It is, it is this universal law, really, of, of how transformation works in our lives, in the world, in the universe, through all things. And so if we know the rules, then we can know how to align with them and how to work with them and go from feeling I'm being just dragged along by the heel in the, in the, the wake of change to, okay, I am moving with the current and I am taking empowered action according to this map that I have that tells me when things are like this, do ABC. When things are like that, do XYZ in order to move in alignment with these universal archetypal processes. Yeah. I think that, that awakens this uh, self-compassion too. I think mm. that- What do you mean by that? Well, because it's like a lot of times I think that when we see something as challenging in our life or something has gone wrong, right? What what we consider wrong. Oh, that relationship didn't work out. That job didn't work out. That blah, 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 blah. We see these things and we go, oh, that was wrong. Look at me. Look at what I've done wrong. Blah. And instead, we can look at these phases and these moments and be in the space of just presence with ourselves and like, oh, I really understand and I can have compassion for myself that I am having a struggle right now. I am on mm. a struggle bus and I know Michelle and I often have, when we're having our personal conversations with each other sometimes, sometimes you're just not okay. And we'll, you know, sometimes one or the other of us will, will you know, we're like, how are you doing? And it's like, well, I'm not okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not okay, but I'm totally okay. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's this space of even in the not okayness of this moment, I am so okay. And I mm -hmm. think that that's an, in, such a deep inner personal transformation of self that you're just 
yeah, wow, this is, this is really intense right now. This is very challenging. This is, I am moving through some stuff and I'm not okay. And I'm so okay in that not okay. Mm. That's a really great point. It's, it's like this creating more freedom and embodied trust and surrender and stability, even in a potentially uncomfortable or volatile or unpredictable experience. So, which I think is ultimately, um, you know, that's, that's really a resilience thing is how stable can you be internally and how consistent in your own trust and self-compassion, like you said, can you be anchored in despite what is going on around you? I love that. And, and I really do feel like alchemy has been a major contributing factor in my understanding in my, my life for my ability to do that. Yeah. yeah. And it is not just uh, about, oh, the, the super hard challenges and the really like, you know, getting through the darkness. Um, yeah. Although that can be a part of it. It's, it's, it's also about the inner cultivation of light and transforming mm -hmm. yourself into more of a light radiant being and having mm. that relationship to the inner radiance within and the radiance of the unity of all that you are consciously having that relationship with that and cultivating that within yourself. And through that process, there are the sloughing off of the the parts that are not in agreement and not in alignment with that light and not mm -hmm. uh, capable of of being in that frequency. And mm. so it's not just about being able to cope with what is challenging. It's about actively becoming something that is more radiant. Um, you know, we could say of a higher vibration or a higher frequency, but that is, mm -hmm. is seeking to consciously cultivate the higher self within this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are many different ways that we can look at that, you know, but it's, uh, let's steer this back toward looking at that through the lens of the spiritual awakening experience, Kat, because I think what you're talking about with the the cultivation of our radiance or the embodiment of our divine higher self presence or the or self actualization or coming home to ourselves whatever you want to call it when people are going through a spiritual awakening and and let me clarify here i really do firmly believe that we go through multiple spiritual awakenings throughout our whole trajectory and maybe the first one might feel a little more dramatic because it's uh, it's a newer experience. But, you know, I've been on the path for, I would say, the majority or if not entirety of my life, as we all have been to some degree or another. And I'm still going through awakening experiences. And I'm guessing that that will continue for the rest of my life as well. But looking at, uh, you know, perhaps for people who are um, are newer to that experience, I want to offer you this blueprint for some perspective that might feel really helpful to you, particularly if you're sort of looking around being like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And you're, you're here on YouTube. So you found us or Spotify. So you found this. So please, I hope this is helpful to you. Um, the, you know, what Kat is talking about of this, this actualization experience. Yes. If we are if we are attuned to our radiance, and this is true across the board of any healing work that we're doing or any actualization work or whatever it is, if we are shifting our inner alignment, our inner vibration, our embodiment, our, our mindset, all, all of the layers to one of love, joy, peace, radiance, health, vitality, well-being, inherently what will happen is we will start to see and become a lot more aware of all the things that are not in alignment with that. And this is true across the board of anyone going through a healing or awakening journey. And things show up when they are ready to leave. They become forefront in our conscious awareness when we are ready to let them go or when they are no longer serving us or when we have outgrown them. And that can be a particularly uncomfortable experience. A lot of people have these spiritual awakening experiences where, you know, perhaps they have, um, you know, it comes through a dramatic life event, such as a near death experience or a tremendous loss or a big shift, or they go drink plant medicine or something like that. Or perhaps they just wake up one day and they have a different perspective for some reason, some internal calibration or a particular dream. 
or life experience. And no matter what gets them there, it's like, okay, the door is open now to a different way of being. I feel different. Something is different inside me. I am connected to something bigger than myself that I wasn't aware of before. Oh gosh, all these things around me that I've been tolerating just don't fit anymore. And I'm not willing to to live in that. And so there's this sloughing off process. And this is the first stage of alchemy. It's called calcination and it's the death and release of physical structures. So death and release of physical structures, it's, it's the burning. It's like, um, you know, think of th things that appear in our 3d lives. So our jobs, our relationships, our families, our finances, our bodies, our homes, all of the, th the physical structures, the, the things that make up the, the material existence of who we are and what we are. And that is the first thing to go. And people experience this. And this is, you know, sim simultaneously or in conjunction with or followed by the death and release of the etheric and emotional structures. This is the next stage of alchemy, um, which is a grieving and releasing process and letting go of our energetic identity, our emotional identity. So the first stages of alchemy are really about letting go. And that's where, you know, some of the messiness happens. That's where, you know, Kat, you're saying it's not all the struggle. It's not all the, you know, through the darkest moments of life, but knowing that loss and releasing and surrender is, a, is the first part of the stage of alchemy, not from a place of, oh, these, all these terrible things are happening in your life, but from a place of, as you are recalibrating yourself toward radiance, what doesn't fit that anymore? And trusting that whatever we surrender to the fire, we, we have to surrender everything to the fires of transformation and trust and have faith beyond all reason that that which is true and that which is aligned with our highest radiance will survive to remain on the other side. But we don't know that before we go in. Let me just let that sit there for a second. This <laughs> goes kind of heavy. <laughs> it's beyond all reason. It needs to be. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, and, and it's okay that you, and, and so I think just coming from that, um, you can maybe see and understand that if you don't realize that you're in the process of that and you don't see the, the like, oh, eventually this is going to benefit me in some way, that you can get really wrapped up in the experience of it. And the, you know, kind of 3D reality stuff. And you'll hear people say things like, oh my gosh, everything is going wrong for me, or I just can't catch a break, or why is my life falling apart or i'm working so hard but nothing is working out and then that creates this sort of downward spiraling uh experience of really going into things like depression or addiction trying to manage the uh f the feelings and the sensations of the experience through whatever kind of coping mechanism that we've developed in the past mm -hmm. uh, and trying to avoid what is the transformational process that you're in. Mm -hmm. So you can see but that, just that mindset shift of knowing that that exists is empowering to know that, oh, I am in a process. I am mm -hmm. not liking this moment that this process is showing me, but where I am in this process, can I be with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's very, you know, very empowering. And also like that can, it can elicit us to, you know, take empowered action and inspired action. And, you know, one right. of the things that I've heard most consistently from flubbing, graduates down. of my alchemy apprenticeship course is, uh, you know, when bit. I ask them and I, and I ask for feedback from all of my students and I ask, you know, what was the most valuable tools or what were the most valuable pieces of knowledge you, know, you a gained bit from of, uh... this course? 
And pretty consistently, one of the things Space that people here. list in that is just um, knowing about the stages of alchemy. We might both be talking. I have no because idea. Because now that I know ah, my that internet. there is a predictable experience of how transformation works, there's the death, the purification, and rebirth process, it's, it's almost like it takes out it, it's demystifying of that so i don't feel so lost i don't feel alone i don't feel like oh gosh this thing is happening to me i can dig in and collaborate with these cycles and get excited about how that might be moving through my life so yes a piece of empowerment and then also excitement when people know these are the stages and this is what i can expect and you know one of the things i really love to teach and cat you're so great at teaching practices you've got like practices for everything but one of the things that I really love in teaching people alchemy is saying, okay, if you're identifying, you know, we, uh, we have this, you know, kind of three step overarching uh, process of uh, we're looking at study the mystery. So studying the universal cycles of, uh, of the universal law of creation and transformation, practice transformation, meaning take action and have practical application of spiritual technologies, movement practices, breath work mindset, meditation, energy work, etc., and actualize radiance. So looking at, okay, from what we know about universal law, what empowered and inspired actions can we take to collaborate with these universal cycles and make it more fun and be like, okay, great. If As long as I'm in the calcination stage, I might as well get excited and say, okay, what, can, what am I outgrowing that I can get rid of? And how can I do this in a really uh, a really empowered and inspired way to be collaborating with these universal cycles that are blessing me with this opportunity right now. And, and that's what I have found in my life. And it, it does make it a little less uncomfortable. And, uh, dare I say a little bit more, um, like I'm able to have a sense of humor about it. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, I have seen that with my students as well. Yeah. So empowerment, levity, <laughs> These are huge. These are huge things to bring into your life when it comes to transformation and change. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, having that joy and fun and, you know, with, within this, then you are, you're able to do things like inner practices. So there are a lot of inner alchemy practices, working with your energy and working on the inside with your energy that can be done at the same time that you're aware of what's going on in the outside of your life. And so you are transforming internally and you're doing life stuff and you can bring in interesting rituals and uh, working with astrology and working with the elements. And there's so many of these like fun parts that are in there. Um, mm -hmm. so that it isn't just about kind of like a psychological trick of like, well, now I know I'm going through to something so I can go through it in a better way. There's all of these yeah. other mystical, energetic spirits working with specific beings that you can, um, bring so much richness. Like there's, it's mm -hmm. so rich. There's so much to, to play with. Mm. That's one of the things I really love most about alchemy is it, you know, it's these, these universal laws that are applicable to everything and looking at, you know, the, even one principle of alchemy that I'm barely going to touch on here because it's this whole other topic um, of the three wisdoms of Hermes, uh, which is one of the core principles of alchemy, looking at alchemy. It's not just alchemy. Like you said, Kat, it's also astrology. Uh, which is the uh, working with the stars and the planets and um, you know, planetary hours and correspondences and all, all of these other things that again, it's getting into a technical aspect here. And the other, the third wisdom of Hermes is theurgy, which is uh, divine working within the earth. And so that's where the shamanic aspect of alchemy comes in. That's where our ritual practices, working with the earth, working with the elements, working with um, creating our altars, working with um, our movement practices, working with everything related to how we're putting this into action in the world around us comes to play. And that's one of the things I really love most about this. And, you know, people can work with alchemy with, uh, you know, with all sorts of different ways. Like, you know, one of the common misconceptions of 
when I tell people I practice alchemy, they're like, oh, are you, you know, usually they ask first about like coaching the mindset piece, but then they're like, oh, are you melting down metals in your kitchen? And I say, no, I'm, I don't do that. But, you know, there, there are people who do practice, uh, uh, alchemy with metals. There are people who practice alchemy with plants. There are people who practice alchemy with dew, right? Kat, you know, somebody who only works with dew and, uh, and many other ways, you know, alchemy in art, alchemy in music, transfu yeah. transposing these, again, universally applicable spiritual skill sets into your particular zone of genius, because it is archetypal, it is universal. Yeah. And so there, you know, it's pick your favorite and how you get to play with it in your life. Right. Because I will use it in, in terms of, you know, working with herbs and plants or making art mm -hmm. or um, working with the altar, working with specific beings, using um, using correspondences and using um, layers of energies that are alike to mm -hmm. enhance ritual or enhance uh, something that I'm working with on myself or calling in or creating. And uh, so there is, there is like so much richness. And I think it does speak to different people in different ways. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. you, you might be really interested in, um, in working with metals or plants or animals or, you know, the unseen realms or internally working with your own energy or um, working with the planets and working with the celestial beings. And, mm -hmm. um, and so there's a, there's, there's so much there for individual people to find their, their like excitement. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, I have a, uh, granted alchemy does already show up in my life and it's very emergent in my practice in my healership practice, my mentorship practice, and then also my own, uh, personal art practice. But I do have kind of a, a secret slash not so secret personal ambition to be an alchemical jeweler. Like, I think that would be so fun to make custom alchemical talismans and, um, and totems for people. And, you know, in case it's not obvious, I, I love artisan, stones and jewelry and working with metals, et cetera. And so I, I have had that in mind for a long time. And who knows if, if at some point that aligns in my life where that's how alchemy is wanting to come into expression in my, my artistic practice, then maybe that will be the case. But for now, yeah, I, I make personal totems. I, I make things for my friends and for my clients. And Kat, you do such a beautiful job in your work with the, um, like the selenite knives and the antlers and all of your wonderful paintings which I know are very coded. That's, that's another piece here is when we're working with alchemy, we're using particular codes and frequencies of these magical technologies to anchor into uh, either items that we're creating or practices or altars that we're creating or rituals that we're creating. And we're working with these specific codes to invite in those energies for a particular purpose of guidance, healing, illumination, transformation. So alchemy, it's again, not just a buzzword. There's actually a whole lot there. And, uh, and Kat and I certainly bring it to both of our practices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, well, do you want to just tell us a little bit about your alchemy, your alchemy course? Yeah, thank you. My alchemy course, uh, it's called I Am Alchemy. It's up on my website, michellehawk.com. And uh, it is a year-long apprenticeship in practical alchemy. It's alchemy uh, training. And yes, we get into the philosophy and the teachings and there's, uh, you know, materials. And I wrote a book for the course. So you're getting, you know, my many years of practice in terms of the uh, the theory of it, but it's also, as I said, a practical application of alchemical tools in your life. So almost every single module has an accompanying movement practice. So you can do things to work with these codes and, and frequencies in your body, has uh, suggested ritual practices and consciousness practices. There are also retreats. So there are four experiential learning retreats, um, one for each of the phases 
of alchemy. So one to begin the course working with the death phase, one in the middle to work with the purification phase, one kind of three quarters way through to work with the rebirth phase, and then a graduation retreat at the end for those apprentices who are uh, wishing to demonstrate their mastery and offer practicum and, uh, and receive certification as I am alchemy practitioners. So it is uh, a year long, as I said, it's, um, it's a deep work, deep dive apprenticeship. And, uh, and if this is calling to you, you can reach out to me through my website, michellehawk.com and submit your application. The course begins in the spring. It's aligned with the alchemical year calendar. So we begin in the spring, every spring. This year, 2024 is my one, two, three, four, fifth, fifth time teaching this course. And it is really, really wonderful. I have a lot of fun doing it. My students really love it. And I actually do have a couple of students in this year's cohort who have already taken the course in previous years and decided that they wanted to do it again. So I think that that speaks really positively of this work that people who already went through a year of this this stuff with me in the past are saying, you know what? Yeah, that sounds awesome. I'd love to do that. And I want to come to the retreats. Thank you. So that makes me really happy that um, it's it's making such a difference in their lives that they're wanting to reimmerse themselves and and join again, as well as the new students coming into this for the first time. So if you're interested, I'm taking applications now and please uh, please do that soon because applications are closing here in a few weeks. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Michelle, um, if you're wanting to uh, learn channeling and mediumship, my course, Open Your Channel, which is my eighth year uh, to teach Open Your Channel, I'm expanding it and adding some extra live calls. I'm adding extra meditation and practice sessions. Uh, mm -hmm. is happening April 2024. And uh, this is the education that you want for stable, activating, stabilizing, and mastering your channeling abilities and skills and developing your psychic intuitive awareness. And uh, if you're interested, just reach out, katherinebird.com. I'm easy to find. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, Kat. And thank you all for joining us. Please like, follow, subscribe. And if you know anyone who needs to hear these episodes, please share them with whoever you like.